Martyr Menas of Egypt, commemorated on November 11, the holy great martyr Menas, Menas, an Egyptian by birth, was a military officer and served in the Cotian region of Phrygia under the centurion Firmilian during the reign of emperors Diocletian, 284-305, and Maximian, 305-311. He was praised and admired for his bravery in battle, his patience, and his self-discipline. In 298, the emperors published an edict ordering everyone to worship the idols. Those serving in the legions were ordered to capture and persecute Christians. As soon as Saint Menas heard this impious decree he threw down his soldier's belt, a sign of military rank, and withdrew to a mountain above Cotian where he lived an ascetical life of fasting and prayer. He spent a long time in the wilderness, suffering great privation and laboring in feats of prayer, fasting, and nocturnal vigils. Thus, the saint purified himself of every passion of soul and body. When his heart was strengthened with godly zeal, and his soul aflame with love for God, divine grace came upon him and he had a vision. He regarded this as a sign that he was to follow the path of martyrdom. Therefore, he left the mountain and went into the city, where the people were celebrating a pagan festival. At that time, St. Menas was approximately fifty years old. Standing in the midst of the crowd, he shouted, There is only one true God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Your gods are demons and your idols have been fashioned by craftsmen. These inanimate objects are nothing but metal, wood, and stone. Those who heard his voice left their dancing and their games and went to see who had disrupted their idolatrous festival, marveling at his boldness. They seized and beat him, then brought him before Pyrrhus, the city prefect. When he saw Menas he asked him who he was, and why he was creating a disturbance. The saint replied, I am an Egyptian, a servant of Jesus Christ, the ruler of all things. I was a soldier and I served in the imperial army for most of my life. But since the emperor has chosen to follow the path of idolatry and to persecute Christians, I chose to dwell with the wild animals in the wilderness rather than obey the impious commands of those who do not know God. When the prefect heard this he became enraged and had the saint thrown into prison. The next morning, Pyrrhus urged Saint Menas to return to the army, offering to restore his former rank if he would offer sacrifice to the pagan gods. Menas refused, and so he was subjected to many cruel tortures. The prefect urged him to submit to the edict and offer sacrifice to the idols, but the martyr remained firm in his faith saying that he would never deny Christ. Pyrrhus ordered further torments, but seeing that he could not persuade Saint Menas, he ordered that he be taken outside the city and beheaded. As he was being led to the place of execution, he asked his friends, who were secret Christians, to take his body back to Egypt for burial when the persecution had ceased. These friends gathered martyrs' relics at night and hid them until the persecution was over. Later, they were brought to Egypt and placed in a church dedicated to St. Menas southwest of Alexandria. St. Menas received the crown of martyrdom in the year 304. By God's grace he continues to work miracles for those who entreat him with faith and love. He is known for healing various illnesses, delivering people from demonic possession, and is a protector, especially during times of war. In 1942, General Erwin Rommel had conquered almost all of North Africa and was heading toward Alexandria. The Nazis had reached El Alamein, one where they camped for the night, intending to attack Alexandria in the morning. St. Menas, however, did not allow this to happen. At midnight, October 23-24, Certain people noticed Saint Menas coming out of his ancient church leading camels into the German camp. Overcome by panic, weakness, and confusion, Rommel's troops fled. The battle ended on November 4 with the enemy in full retreat. 
it is regarded as a turning point in the whole war. Later, Winston Churchill said, Before Alamein we never had a victory. After Alamein we never had a defeat. The Allies offered that place to Patriarch Christophoros of Alexandria so that the Church of St. Menas could be rebuilt. We pray to St. Menas to ask for his help in finding lost objects. Martyr Victor at Damascus, commemorated on November 11, the holy martyr Victor at Damascus was a soldier during the reign of the Emperor Marcus Aurelius the Philosopher, 161-180. When the emperor began a persecution against Christians, Victor refused to offer sacrifice to the pagan gods. Such obligatory sacrifices were a test of a soldier's loyalty to the gods. The emperor and the state. The saint was given over to torture, but he came through all the torments unharmed. By the power of prayer he was victorious over a sorcerer. Who from that point gave up give sorcery and became a Christian? Through St. Victor's prayers, blind soldiers suddenly received their sight. Witnessing the miracle worked by the Lord through St. Victor, Stephanida, the young Christian wife of one of the torturers, openly glorified Christ, for which she was condemned to a cruel death. She was tied to two palm trees bent to the ground, which when released, sprung back and tore her apart. She was fifteen years old. The torturer ordered that the holy martyr Victor be beheaded. Hearing the commander's order, Saint Victor told his executioners that they would all die in twelve days, and that the commander would be captured by the enemy in twenty-four days. As he foretold. So it came to pass. The martyrs suffered in the second century at Damascus, where their venerable relics were buried. Martyr Vincent of Spain, commemorated on November 11. The holy martyr Vincent of Spain from his childhood was the disciple of a wise pastor Valerian, the bishop of the city of Augustopolis, now Saragossa, Spain. When he reached mature age, the virtuous, educated and eloquent Vincent was ordained deacon by Bishop Valerian. Since the bishop himself was not adept in speech, he gave a blessing to his deacon, an eloquent orator to preach in church and among the people. Diocletian, 284-305, sent the governor Dacian to the city of Valencia, Spain with full authority to find and execute Christians. People denounced the wise bishop and his deacon to the governor, who arrested them. The soldiers, mounted on horses, dragged the elder and his disciple behind them in chains from Augustopolis to Valencia and there they cast them into prison beaten and tortured, giving them neither food nor water. They subjected the bishop to the first interrogation. The elder spoke quietly, but seemed tongue-tied and uncertain. Then St. Vincent came forward and made the most eloquent speech of his life before the judges and assembled people. After he sent the bishop back to prison, the persecutor gave orders to torture the holy deacon. The martyr underwent many torments, while nailed to a cross, he was whipped and burned with red-hot rods. When he was removed from the cross, he then himself joyfully climbed back upon it, saying that the executioners were lazy and had not fulfilled their master's orders. They became angry and tortured him again, until they were all exhausted. After the tortures they threw the martyr back into prison. That night the astonished guard heard him singing psalms, and saw an unearthly radiant light in the prison. The next morning the holy martyr was condemned to be burned on a gridiron. Christians took the saint's body and buried it with reverence. This occurred in the year 304.